Hello everybody, my name is Hutch Johnson. I'm a meteorologist from the Northern Plains and we're talking about a wintry stretch of weather that could last well through the month of January for many across the United States. A couple of rounds of significant wintry weather as we go into the new year. We're gonna go over all of it. Cold air, snow, freezing rain in January. Coming up in this version of Hutch's weather. We're gonna start right off the bat with a look at the American forecast model, and we're gonna take a look at the track of the storm system now working its way through the United States and why some of this cold air will be drawn into the deep south. Now, as we get started with this model, what we're going to see is the a future radar here. In blue is where it's snow, in green is where we'll have periods of rain or areas of rain, rather, and here we go. Now, as we see this system, the storm system working its way through the uh, central plain states here. It's going to roll out of places like Iowa tonight. And as we go into our New Year's Eve day, we'll have it working its way through places like Illinois, Indiana, and the Ohio River Valley. There'll be rain on the south side of the system, but quickly it will cool off when the winds become northerly in Indiana, Ohio, as we go into your New Year's Eve celebrations. This will set up wet weather for New Year's Eve along the east coast with showers, some of them heavy, maybe even a rumble of thunder, and then bands of heavy snow. With the cold air having that northern component, we're going to pick up that uh, lake effect snow in the typical places. Uh, we're talking Erie Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and all the way up into the New England states will have that batch of snow lasting right into the New Year's Day part of the new year. We'll look at snowfall amounts with these systems here in a moment. For now, that's going to usher in this north wind and wave one of cold weather. That isn't going to be super duper cold anywhere, but it's definitely going to be noticeably cold all the way down into the northern tier of the Gulf Coast states. Do you see this blue line here? This is a measure of the thickness of the atmosphere, if you will and the atmosphere gets more shallow when we have cold, dense air. So this blue line that you see here is the leading edge of that cold air. Freezing temperatures and the freezing temperatures will be digging south thanks to this brisk north wind. It will be very frigid in the northern plains. Now we'll keep our eyes tuned on the north as we go through the first week of, of weather here in the new year. Pacific Northwest, Big time storm system rolling off of the Pacific Northwest will set up shop in the Rocky Mountains and develop a Colorado low. And that's going to bring a batch of snow through the northern Rockies and into the uh, high country of the Black Hills. Here we go. Colorado low begins developing. These puppies are one of the most potent storm systems for all areas because they draw with the south wind on air from the Gulf of Mexico. This warm, humid air rises up into the southern plains, the central plains, and sets the shop up. The Gulf of Mexico open for business. It's the moisture source for things like very heavy rain. It's the moisture source for very heavy bands of snow. This Colorado low, depending on how quick it moves through, how intense it gets, will dictate the exact track of the snow. And look at this. Yes. Because this cold Arctic air mass will be in place, we're going to have freezing precipitation. That's right, freezing rain, sleet, accumulating sleet, and it could be a mess in the nation's midsection. And then a band of heavy snow on this American model, setting up shop in parts of Missouri, Iowa, northern parts of Kansas, and for our friends in southern parts of Nebraska, we'll be getting some shovel trouble indeed, maybe even snowblower-worthy snow for these areas. There could be, with the onset of this uh, leading edge of warm, uh, colder, drier air rolling out of the high plains, interacting with the warm, moist air, some thunderstorms that could be strong or maybe even severe, particularly as we go into Saturday night and into Sunday. Now, this system works its way into the East Coast. A line of sharp showers and thunderstorms will accompany it. The main event here is an Arctic air mass coming right out of British Columbia and Saskatchewan. This is even colder than the first round, and this one dives right down into the Rio Grande Valley of Texas and the Gulf of Mexico. Freezing temperatures will be possible, but this storm system heading from the 5th through the 7th will work its way through uh, Illinois, uh, Indiana, and the Great Lakes states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and all the way through Michigan and into the northeastern United States. The track and intensity can and will shift. This is not a precise forecast. This is guidance 
sharing with us what one model is showing. Snow continuing through the 6th and 7th, laying a layer on top of the storm system that moved through through the New Year's holiday. Here is the story. The cold Arctic air mass spilling its way right into the deep south. Watch that blue line again as it pushes right into the Gulf of Mexico. Scattered light showers or clipper style systems will ride this boundary where we have warmer air out to the west and this cold pool that diagonals from northern Montana right into the southeastern United States and it stays put. And here comes yet another Arctic air mass on the backside of this as we head into the second full week of the month. North winds, cold air. We're going to see more lake effect snows. We're going to have wind and snow interacting on the east coast as we go through the second week of the month. That system's out of here. It looks a little bit quieter with precipitation events except along that boundary in the deep south. What's happening? Well, the jet stream shifting way down to the south takes the storm track with it. And that's going to deliver the best chance of any type of inclement weather that's of significance along the boundary between the cold and the warmer air. That's well to the south. So we will have cold air because of this sticking around in the central and eastern part of the United States as we close through the middle of the month. How long will it last? Let's take a sneak peek because some of our United States will see Arctic cold air continuing right into the end of the month of January. I'm playing the spoilers role here, but let's take a look at the temperatures. Here's the middle of the month. We just made it through. And I do want to point out this, that as we go through New Year's, cold, but not super frigid. Here comes frigid number one air mass working its way through. As we go through the middle of the month, we stay cold in the eastern two-thirds of the United States with brief bouts of warm-up in the Gulf Coast. And we stay cold right through the middle of the month. And then, just when we think we're getting a chance to warm up here in the Central Plains, uh-uh, it's just fooling in January because here comes another Arctic air mass spinning around a Hudson Bay low that's going to draw in another round of Arctic air. Yes, the deep south gets a chance to warm up after about the 17th. It looks nice, but we're going to stay Arctic in Montana all the way through Colorado and the Central Plains states as we go through the entirety of the month of January with a few bouts of this cold, nasty air returning to the deep south even late in the month after your warm up. A tough month of sledding ahead the way it looks. Now let's focus on snowfall amounts, shall we? Let's take a look at the uh, European model for this, and we'll go ahead and take a look at the European snowfall forecast. I don't want to have you focusing on the numbers because when we're talking about storm systems that are this far out, the track can change, the timing can change, the intensity can change. But what I do want to show is that the system working its way through as we go into New Year's Eve and New Year's Day rolls out of Iowa, moves into the Great Lakes states and dumps some significant snow on New Year's Day. This is midnight on the 2nd. So this is basically, uh, as we go into the second day of the new year, we're going to have snowfall amounts in the pinks here are over six inches. So in typical places that see the lake effect snow, Western PA, Western New York, upstate New York, and the New England states up in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, the elevated terrain there is gonna wring out some moisture in the form of snow. We will have measurable snow working its way out of the mountains of Montana, Idaho, straight into the mountains of Wyoming and Colorado, as well as the uh, the uh, mountains in the Pacific Northwest as well. That's round one. Now we get a little bit of a break, but here comes that Colorado low that will be developing, boom, here. So as it moves out of the Pacific Northwest, a round of snow for much of Montana, possibly the Western Dakotas as well. Now it sets up shop here in Colorado. When that happens, we're gonna see that south wind bring its way in and here comes the snow. We're just looking at the snow factor here. And again, very heavy band of snow tracking along with this low pressure system. Those Colorado lows can be uh, some of our greatest r chances of producing a foot or more of snow. This will be wet and very heavy snow the farther south you go, but into the colder air mass as we go north into northern Missouri and Iowa, these are the type of storms that typically can deliver a foot or more of snow along with some robust winds. Notice the track of that taking it right through the Ohio River Valley, northern Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, all the way up into southern Michigan and another round for western PA. Look at this, West Virginia, northern parts of Virginia and the, well, 
the New England states getting another round of snow. So snowfall amounts here again could be over six inches in many areas, but for a few along a narrow band, a foot or more possible, and some mountain ski fun out there in the Tetons of Wyoming. Uh, we're lo looking at the western Rockies of Montana and northern Idaho seeing very significant snow, as will be the case in Colorado. Wyoming in the Pacific Northwest as well. That is a look at the snowfall potential with the system. Here is a look at the moisture potential with the system when we look at rainfall. And again, our southern states will have that chance for some icing. We're going to go over that here momentarily as well. So here is a look at total amounts of precipitation from the European model as that Colorado lows swings through. There's the first system. This is liquid equivalent moisture of the snow working its way through. And here's the Colorado low spinning through right here. Some areas will get over an inch to two inches of rainfall where we see the deep purples that's over two inches of rain look at the mid-atlantic states are picking up significant amounts of precipitation as will be the stormy pacific northwest here's ice oh my goodness the icing potential with the event as we go from the fifth to the seventh is real and this could be a problem when it comes to things like power outages and travel across the nation's midsection. The exact track of the icing is gonna be something that we will watch very closely, but here we go. As we go from the fifth, into uh, fourth into the fifth icing from kansas and missouri is where this draws straight into kentucky look at this in the uh, appalachians uh, here in virginia's as well as uh, north carolina we'll have a chance for some icing this would be significant amounts of ice and the exact track of this and intensity of this is certainly uh, something that could change, but this could be well over a half of an inch or even an inch of freezing rain and sleet through parts of Missouri. This would be tracking through areas south of Kansas City, maybe through places along and south of the I-70 corridor through Columbia and through St. Louis and points south at this point. We'll keep you posted. A meteorologist Hutch Johnson, I love to give you a little bit of a view of the behind the scenes weather forecasting techniques we use to pick out models. But at this stage, a couple of different models are showing a significant winter weather event that will be making its way through the northeastern United States on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. That will include you in the Ohio River Valley. And then a second system that begins on the 4th as strong to severe thunderstorms. And then it begins mixing with the cold air in the northern states that could bring freezing rain and areas and bands of heavy snow, the fifth, the sixth, and on into the seventh as it moves its way into the mid-Atlantic states. If you liked what you saw here, I'd sure appreciate you following me on any of my platforms here on YouTube. You can smash the subscribe button. I sure appreciate it to see more of my content. You can follow me on Facebook as well, or you can visit my website anytime, anywhere, Hutch's Weather. Dot com. For now, thanks for watching. Have a stiff upper lip. It looks just dang cold out there as we'll have snotsicles in the northern plains for the entire month of January. I'm ready. Are you? Drop a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. And are you ready for all the cold air? We'll be thinking about you deep south because we know that not all of you have the same heating devices that we do in the northern plains. For now, stay warm, stay tuned, and stay safe.